Hey guys, so today I've got something really, really special. These are Irwin Sailor Moon action figures. Not to be confused with regular figurines, which there were plenty of back in the 90s. Oh no. These actually can move. Now, if you guys collect the super expensive but amazingly awesome uh, SH Figure Art Sailor Moon figures, maybe you might be a little confused with this video. You're like, well, what's the big deal about action figures? Well, the big deal is that Sailor Moon didn't have very many action figures before SH Figure Arts. Like, back in the 90s, it was there was this sexist stigma that girls didn't play with action figures, girls wouldn't be interested in action figures. It was just dolls and little figurines and nothing else. So there wasn't a whole lot for girls. And if if you did see a girl-related action figure, it was part of a toy line aimed at boys, like Batman or um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or something like that you wouldn't see very many action figures on a whole aimed at girls. And there, at the time, there was even fewer available in America that was anime-based. So this was incredibly huge just for that. And then if you look at the Japanese toy market at the time, well, you'd be surprised to find there were no Sailor Moon action figures at all over there. Like, there were figurines, there were dolls, but no action figures, nothing with articulated joints or, or weapons or anything like that. Well, you know, some had the wands, which we'll get into soon. But you know what I mean. Like, it wasn't like Super Sentai or Power Rangers. So, the fact that these figures exist at all is a dream come true to somebody like me who grew up adoring action figures. I mean, I loved girl toys just as much, but... I'm a action figure junkie, to be honest with you. I love action figures. I collected wrestling figures growing up. I still do. So having real action figures for my favorite anime of all time, it's really special. So curiously, Irwin, and we'll talk about the packaging too, Irwin Ir Ir released just a handful of these action figures just to test the waters. These figures are, ooh, I'd say about, oh, I guess the general size would be roughly almost four inches, like three and a half, four inches. Um, <clears throat> and you can see there's not really a whole lot of consistency in the size at all, unlike the Irwin dolls, which were very consistent. I think the size might have been one issue in selling the dolls is that they're so tiny. I mean, when you can consider the fact that when these figures came out, Power Ranger figures were still about, I'd say, five and six inches tall, and then you have something that's four inches, I think that might have hindered it a little bit. The biggest hindrance was the price. You guys aren't going to believe this, but FYE, they used to sell these figures at the exact same price as the six-inch dolls. And it was like, why am I going to spend upwards of 8 to $10, in some cases $14, for an itty-bitty action figure when, for the exact same price, I can get something two inches taller that has rooted hair that I can brush? <clears throat> this was how a lot of uh, Sailor Moon collectors felt back then. And I think that's why the sales for these were abysmally low and why we didn't get more figures. There was only one set that was officially released, and this is it. And it consists of Tuxedo Mask, Super Sailor Moon, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, and... Well, you were about to say Sailor Chibi Moon, weren't you? Well, keep in mind, this was the 90s. So, we called her Rini, but here's the best part. These came out in 1997. And in 1997... We didn't have Sailor Moon S yet. We were still stuck on Sailor Moon R. We weren't going to get S in any capacity for another couple of years. It was like two more years 
before Cartoon Network got Sailor Moon S. And because of that, we didn't have Chibulosa transformed because unlike Sailor Moon Crystal's second season, Sailor Moon R, she doesn't transform yet. She doesn't even consider herself being a sailor soldier or, in this instance, a sailor scout. So rather than say this is Sailor Chibi Moon or use the name that they later gave her Sailor Mini Moon, they just said, eh, it's Rainy. It's just Rainy. So for a lot of Sailor Moon fans who did not have access to the internet, because we didn't have all of the manga and anime yet, a lot of people just assumed that this was Chibiusa cosplaying as a sailor soldier. They didn't think, oh yeah, she's actually going to transform and be like her mom. So it's landmark, not just, again, for being like basically it for little girl action figures, but also like this was a spoiler set. This was like a set to get us ready for a season we weren't going to see for two years. That's part of what makes this really cool. Now, we're going to talk about what they came with. With the exception of Tuxedo Mask and Sailor Pluto, from what I could find online, almost all of them came with the exact same Crescent Moon Wand or Moon Stick as the 6-inch dolls. That is so lazy. That is so lazy that this is why a lot of people laugh when they see these figures. Because, like, by the time we get to this, Usagi had stopped using this wand. <laughs> and for some reason, like, all of the Irwin dolls up to this point, they came with the same wand, even though only Sailor Moon is ever seen using it. So it's like, why? Why do they all have the same wand, and how come it's not, like, a complete crescent? Like, this is actually built like the toy crescent wand that you cosplay with and not like the one she uses in the series because it's like a half of the moon. Totally strange. Now, my figures didn't come with the wands. I got almost all of, well, I got all of them used, but this one's from one of my six inch dolls. So just for contrast, I, I thought you might like to see, like, that's how they were packaged. And now we're going to talk about packaging. And as you can see, it's not doing so well. So toy packages, and this is about the same worldwide. You're going to see this with American stuff and Japanese stuff just the same. Um, they use this thin plastic to package the figurines. And the thing is, it's like Halloween mask plastic for little kids. You're not supposed to keep this forever. It's supposed to be used just long enough to get the figure onto the store shelf, get somebody to buy the figure, and then once the figure is out of the package, this is supposed to be discarded. Nobody thought that there would be a collector's market that would be, like, obsessed with NRFB for years and years. Now, I've mentioned this in my Chibiusa review videos, and I'm going to talk about it here because now you can see it. The problem with this packaging is that because the plastic is so thin, the molecules are really ridiculously crap. So what's going to happen is first it turns yellow, and then what I've seen on some old toys, it adheres to the plastic and ruins the toy. And we don't want to do that. We want to save Sailor Uranus. I think she's been through enough, don't you? So we're going to do a jump cut, and I'm going to get her out of here. Okay, so Uranus has been saved. So now let's take a look at the figures up close, because here comes the fun part. So we're going to start with Tuxedo Mask, who curiously has light brown, pink brown hair and a yellow bow tie. This is wild. I don't have anything else like this. I have two other Tuxedo Mask figures where their hair is a little bit on the bluish side, like in the manga, and... I have two Irwin dolls where they gave him dark, dark brown hair, but this is the first one I've had with hair like this. What is up? And his eyebrows are brown. What is up with this? Like, everything else is fine, but the bow tie and the hair and the eyebrows, what? The cape is detachable. 
So you can make him do more poses depending on whether or not you want him with the cape or not. I want him with the cape. And all these action figures, they can move their arms forwards and backwards, and they can bend the elbows, and they can bend their knees. And he actually sits normally. And you're going to see what I mean by that very soon, because next we're going to look at his future bride, Super Sailor Moon. Oh, I should mention too, um, Tuxedo Mask can move his head side to side. Super Sailor Moon cannot. Her head is stationary. And they gave her, well, they gave her an interesting locket combo. There's like a little dinky tiny moon in the center of the heart, so you could almost use that with Super S as well as S. Because some of the uh, Super S merchandise had that. It's like a double spoiler. Isn't that cool? They gave her Sailor Saturn's white tiara for inexplicable reasons. I guess, you know, the, we can do a moon here, but not here. Interesting choice. And now here's what I mean by sitting normally. For some reason, all of the girls sit like this. Like, like childbirth mode. You know, I, I, I don't get why. But this was like a thing with most girl-based action figures in the 90s. I have a Batgirl, I had a Batgirl figure who was like that too. Like, she had these wide hips, and when she sat down, she couldn't sit normally like you saw a tuxedo mask. She had to sit like, you know, her legs were splayed. What is up, man? Oh. And... Her arms can move up and down, which is funny because the shoulder guards go with it. For being so tiny, though, they did do, do a good job on her face and on her hair. And we forgot the little white clips, though, but that's okay. She's cute. You may recall Sailor Chibi Moon or Rini from an old video from long ago, but now that I have a better camera, you can see her better. Her plastic is aging. When I first got her, it was like a bright sugary pink, and now it's kind of faded into sort of an orangey pink, so she matches my Japanese dolls. She does not bend her elbows for some reason. I mean, you know, she's not that much shorter than Sailor Moon, so you'd think that they would have her, like, bend her knees and bend her elbows, but she doesn't do that. But, like her dad, she can turn her head. I think they did a great job on her locket. I mean, it's so tiny, but you can actually see what it is. Her hair looks a little messed up. I got her this way, but that's okay. A lot of action figures like the paint chips and you know it gets a little warped but it's not mold or anything so it's not a big deal maybe i'll repaint her one day i don't know i, I like her as is i like sometimes when i get sailor moon toys and there's like little little scratches and chips because it's like they're battle worn it's like they've seen combat like these are real superheroes you know and yeah, like, she's not very much shorter than Sailor Moon. She's almost the same size. It's like she really grew. So I don't know why they didn't give her the joints. Let's see Sailor Uranus. Uranus, they gave her more manga-accurate hair. It's light blonde instead of the dark dishwater blonde we see in the anime. Can she move her head? No, she can't move her head. They gave her a red tiara? That's curious. That's also like the sweetest, happiest face I've ever seen on a, a Uranus toy. Yeah, look at... Yeah, that is actually like the happiest Sailor Uranus face. Oh, she can move her head. Cool. And, yep, yep, she moves her arms and legs just fine. And again, the childbirth position. I bet you never thought you'd see Sailor Uranus in that position, huh?
Well, this is interesting. Her back says 1998, but her packaging said 1997. How long were they planning these? That is curious, don't you think? And now we'll see Neptune. She's got, actually, she's got the same face as her girlfriend. She's got the little charm on her, her choker. They took a little more time with her than they did her girlfriend. She can move her head. Elbows and knees, they seem to be in working order. Yep, yep, she sits exactly the same way. And, yeah, she also says 98 on the back. I know that a lot of these were in production through 99, but there wasn't a whole lot of them. I wish they did more because I'm loving these. Pluto came with her own time key, which I really love. And then here's Pluto. And they gave her the same happy face. Oh my gosh, they're all just happy to see us. There's a little dust on there. That's my fault. I had her on a different shelf, and I'm currently um, building another shelf. I forgot to dust them. My bad. So, her joints move normally. They gave her blue eyes. And, yep, yep, she sits in the same way. Her plastic's starting to yellow a little bit, but I like it that way because you're starting to see more of her hair, her skin color. She does have a bow back here, but her hair is, like, permaglued over it. And she does move her head a little. Now, we're going to take a look at something really cool. So you may have noticed that Uranus came with a booklet. So, let's read what the booklet says, and I'll correct anything as we go along. And keep in mind, guys, this is the 90s. This is Sailor Moon, once a regular teenager, now the champion of justice and the princess of the moon. Luna, her talking cat, helps her on adventures. Serena, Princess Serena, Super Sailor Moon. Birthday, June 30th. Sailor Scout Attack, Moon Tiara Magic, Moon Scepter Elimination. Serena loves to talk and eat. You might be wondering how come part of this is in French. Well, Irwin sold more stuff in Canada. So a lot of the 97 Sailor Moon stuff is like half French and half English. I think is really nice of them. And, oh my god, we're getting different names for some of the characters. Here we go. They list Sailor Venus's name as Nina. Well, her Deke name was Mina, and her Japanese name is M Minako. And, you know, in Parallel Sailor Moon, her daughter's name is Mina. So they just swapped the letter M for the letter N. That's something. Here are the Sailor Scouts, Sailor Moon's loyal friends, oh, and Artemis. I love how he's just like a secondary thought. Poor Artemis. Ray, birthday, April 17th, Sailor Scout attack, Mars fire at night. Ray likes to sing. Eh, in the anime, yes. In the manga, that's more Venus's thing. Amy, September 10th, Sailor Scout attack, Mercury bubbles blast. Amy loves computers. Lita, birthday December 5th, Sailor Scout Attack, Jupiter Thunder Crash. Lita is a great cook. Nina, wow, you can tell they must have started writing this before the show actually, like, hit certain markets. Birthday October 22nd, Sailor Scout Attack, Cr Venus Crescent Bean Smash. Nina was a professional model. Was? Past tense? Well... Well, that's not entirely not true if you read the Codename Sailor V manga, which you should because it's awesome. Who do we have here? 
The Sailor Scouts have friends like this dreamy hunk and this little girl. Oh my god, the creep factor. Oh, did your butthole slam shut too? Mine did. Darian, Prince Darian. Oh, tuxedo mask. Birthday, August 3rd. Favorite we re weapon, red rose. Darian will always love Serena. Aww. Rainy, birthday, June 30th. The Luna Ball has magic powers. Rini is Serena and Darian's daughter from the future. Ooh, spoiler alert. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did you guys see that? No, that's not Luna P. They just cut off Luna's head and stuck an antenna on it. Oh, my God, that looks lewd. Why would you do that? Oh, poor Luna. And it's so cheap because, look. It's the same picture they already used. Oh my god, I've never seen this before. This is funny because, like, again, like I said earlier, Sailor Moon R was still on TV when these figures originally came out, but we hadn't gotten the last um, 17, technically 18 episodes, the lost episodes, on Toonami yet. That wouldn't come until 98. So you guys just totally spoiled that that's their kid. Oh my god, that's so cool. And it's accurate, because she is. Oh my god. Oh my god, I didn't even see this. The Sailor Scouts fight evil negaverse villains. Life isn't just cheeseburgers and cute guys in capes. Wow, that has so much sexist snark, I can't even... The Wicked Lady. This is Rini under a, an evil spell. Oh, we're not going to introduce Rubius or Queen Beryl or Diamond or Emerald. Oh, okay. Well, screw you two. Well, that is true. You know, that is Chibiosa's, you know, evil self. Um, some of you have asked before on Facebook, how come there's some stuff that says The Wicked Lady? When all the new stuff has her Japanese name, Black Lady. Fun stuff. Um, Deke didn't want to keep the name Black Lady because it sounded a little offensive. And they thought kids might get confused, so they just said Wicked Lady. Other names I used to see were Dark Lady and uh, Black Moon Lady and Dark Moon Lady. Fun times in the 90s. Oh, this has been on Moon Sisters for years, and now we get to see it up close. With all those villains, it's always good to find new friends, in case the old ones don't do it. So again, keep in mind, this was before Sailor Moon S came to the United States. Deke had not gotten the rights to Sailor Moon S at this point. And it was going to be another two years before the movie and the series finally hit Cartoon Network. The movie being partially done with Deke and Optimum Productions. And then the Sailor Moon S TV show being done by Cloverway, not Deke. So here are the names that they originally thought of. Nerissa. She later became Michelle. Her name is Michiru. Corin. Her name later became Amara. That is Haruka. And Celia. Her name later became Trista. And in Japan, she's Setsuna. Another name I used to see for her was Susan. So, fun stuff there. Let's see. Nerissa, birthday March 6th. Sailor Scout Attack, Deep Submerge. Nerissa plays the violin. Accurate. Corin, birthday January 27th. Sailor Scout Attack, World Shaking. Yep. That's not what we called it in the English version, but that is the Japanese version. Corin races cars. Yes, she does. Celia. Birthday, October 29th. Sailor Scout Attack, Dead Scream. Celia is a fashion designer? Well, I know in some of the text from Japan it says she wants to be a fashion designer, but this never actually comes up in the manga or in the anime. We never see her as a fashion designer. We see her in college. We see her just on her own. In Sailor Moon Crystal, we see her in college. And later on in the manga, we do see her as, like, the school nurse slash doctor at Chibiusa's school. But uh, this is interesting. 
I know that at one point it was planned that she wanted to be a fashion designer, just we just don't see it. Wow, I can't believe they used that. That's kind of cool. One day, Darian and Serena will live happily ever after in their own moon kingdom. And they're going to cut off Sailor Mars's head in the corner. That's right. Sailor Moon's looking at Sailor Mars like, he my man now. You ain't going to date him no more. Back off. Yep. Well, um, there's Keenan Dimian and Neo Queen Serenity in Crystal Tokyo. You can argue it is like their own moon kingdom. I mean, it's, it's not really too wrong, but it is on Earth. It's in Crystal Tokyo, which is in Japan on Earth. But hey, that's a neat collective file that I did not expect to read so much from. Alrighty, so now you have seen the original Irwin Sailor Moon action figures. I know there were rumors about action figures for regular Sailor Moon and for the Inners, but these guys didn't sell well enough, so we never got them. And it's a real shame, because now that you've seen them up close, you've seen they're actually really cool. Like, they can kick butt, they can do some ni nice little poses, they came with an interesting little booklet. I feel like we really totally missed out, honestly. I'm really grateful that I have them, and... I hope you guys are finding new things to love about them yourself, whether you've gotten the chance to collect them or not. Um, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you soon.